I'm Kristen Forsberg. I'm a biologist and social entrepreneur, and I'm founder and director of the nonprofit Planet Oceano that works in marine conservation in Peru. Giant manta rays have many, many threats worldwide. The largest threat worldwide has been uh, catch. We're talking about a species that reproduces very slowly. It has only one pup each two to seven years and reaches the age of sexual maturity between the ages of seven and ten. So we're talking about um, a species that, that can't reproduce quickly and that is, is quickly jeopardized if we're extracting too much of the population. Populations of giant manta rays are relatively small, talking about a few thousand individuals perhaps, or a few hundred individuals. So that means that you're taking out these very important individuals, um, you, you're severely you know, diminishing the population. Uh, there have been international threats, uh, such as the international gill plate trade um, for Asian markets, which really have decimated populations worldwide. And what we were very concerned about here in Peru was to make sure that this wasn't a threat to the population in, in, in northern Peru, which is one of the most significant populations of giant mantas in the world. threats include intentional catch, but also include bycatch. Mm -hmm. So this means that fishermen uh, aren't intentionally capturing them, but they're still entangled in nets and they, and they still die. Apart from that, mantas are also exposed, as many species in the water, uh, to plastics, to microplastics. They, they filter feed, they filter um, zooplankton, and they're eating the zooplankton, but when they're eating the zooplankton, they're also eating microplastics if we have an ocean filled with microplastics. They're exposed to climate change. Any change in climate conditions will change the distribution, will change the currents uh, of migratory patterns, of, of occurrence in the Peruvian waters. How big did it have to be? always focused on reaching out to people and asking what are the issues that you're seeing and how can we address this together and so we did exactly the same thing with giant mantas we were noticing uh, the challenges that mantas were facing in northern Peru and we said okay we sat down with fishermen we did multiple meetings with fishermen and said how can we address this together um, and so that led us to identify and, and develop really really strong bonds with uh, a lot of local fishermen that would start reporting giant manta rays when they ever got caught or if they saw them in the ocean. And then based on that and, and identifying leaders, we helped fishermen to develop a fisherman association focused on giant manta ray ecotourism. So that means that now uh, tourists from outside of Peru or from inside of Peru can go out and swim and, with giant manta rays or see them jumping out of the water and that brings back opportunities to the community as well. Just last week, for example, uh, we had reports of uh, giant mantas that had been harvested and so they still are getting intentionally or incidentally entangled and then um, the fishermen are still bringing them back. So despite that there is a lot of community engagement now, there is still so much that we need to do. turismo va a traer más ganancias que la pesca porque ahorita la pesca cada día que pasa está decayendo más 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 y más y todos los pescadores estamos afectados por motivo de que toditos tenemos préstamos créditos grandes y, y no podemos salir de esto porque la pesca cada día se, se hunde más más y más
se me atrapa uno en la, en la red. En antes lo que hacía uno era agarrarle, meterle cuchillo, o chaparla, cazarla, amarrarle un cabo y, que, y transportarla para la orilla. Ahora no, pero ahora ya metemos cuchillo, pero para que ya se vaya viva, ya cortamos el material nosotros. A que a pesar de todo, no, se te enreda un animal de esos tan enormes que te destroza todito tu material. Pero como tienes el conocimiento y sabes que esto va a ser un futuro para el pescador, tienes que caballero nomás valorar tu material. Kids are working on ocean literacy activities and game-based education and we're transforming what's happening in classrooms. And then we're working also with youth and youth empowerment programs and we have Manta clubs in, in different schools. And we're really excited because our educational approaches have scaled up a lot in, in the last few years and, and gotten to reach international attention as well. So we're key partners, for example, with UNESCO on its global action program on education for sustainable development. Pero lo que estamos haciendo ahora con Kelsin es lo que, lo que ha venido ahorita haciendo, no o sea sensibilizar a los niños, enseñarles a través de métodos didácticos, pero que lo que está empleando es un método didáctico para que los niños este, lleven ese mensaje a su casa. ¿no? Well, one of the things, uh, I'm also a board member of uh, Earthwatch, and one of the projects we're really pushing is local community involvement, and this project exemplifies that. People now get excited about giant manta rays, something that, you know, before people didn't even notice that existed or maybe didn't even care, now is really part of who they are as a, as a culture and an identity. And so you'll see the kids in, in manta fairs or in manta parades, getting really excited and talking about what, what manta rays really are and what they mean to them. Um, you'll see fishermen that if a manta ray is entangled in, in their nets, you'll see fishermen that start releasing giant manta rays and report on it excitedly and they're happy to mention to their peers. Giant manta rays can live up to 40 years and weigh over 2,200 kilograms. We'd love to have your input, so if you know someone who is helping change the world, drop us a line at an at cgtnamerica.com or tweet us at cgtnamerica and tell us about a game changer you would like to see on the show. America's Next.